Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be working on my 93 Toyota Mark IV Supra Aerotop. I'm going to be replacing the rear discs and pads in this video. Uh, I've, I've ordered a brand new set all around because I've had a really bad break for the last couple of weeks. So I'm really hoping this will sort it out. So uh, stay tuned please and uh, let me know what you guys think. Right, so here is my new discs. Really good packaging. M10 car parts. Brake parts. Uh, came here in like two days. It was amazing. Um, wow. A lot of bubble wrap. There we go. Dimple and grooved. There. They look really good. Great packaging. So, what you've got to do, I've read the instructions already, is uh, there's like a kind of an oily coating on the discs and you need to clean it off before you can fit them to the car so i've got my gloves on uh, i've got some old rag and i got some standard thinners and i'm gonna just give them a white down now and they should be ready then to ready to run so. Ten and a half inches wide at the back and nine and a half on the front. So I'm gonna take this off and I'll show you the state of the, the disc. This is actually a Lexus LS400 kind of 95 model um, rear carrier um, for the where the piston is. Uh, I replaced that because the original ones were actually seized and they were in really poor shape. Um, but you can see all the pitting on the disc here, like it's it's in really um, poor shape. And just down here at the bottom, you can see there's actually it's quite a huge crack there as well. So I think that's where we're kind of getting the brake shutter. Um, and we're going to have to swap these out for the fresh discs. So at the moment I'm going to take the wheel spacer off and I'm going to try and get this carrier bearing or carrier um, brake caliper off as well and then hopefully the disc will come loose. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So I've got my axle stand in under here and um, obviously safety first because uh, you definitely want to have an access stand on or you don't want to just have to rely on the jack especially when you're hanging out of a corner of the car uh, that has no wheel on as well so so they were super tight uh, I'd say they haven't been off in about 20 years but if that ever happens always use leverage instead of putting so much force you'll probably hurt yourself so uh, got them all cracked open now I'm just going to open them up ready to take off the caliper. There's only two bolts in at the very back here uh, of the caliper. You don't want to remove this one up here. That's actually to remove, separate the caliper part with the carrier um, on the caliper. So what I want to do is actually not, not under both those two, but there's two in here at the back. Um, I might try and get the camera in there and just show you the bottom one. Uh, so it's actually this guy just here uh, is the one we want to remove. And at the top here, there's another one just inside. So. Um, that's why I'm going to crack those open now and hopefully it will take a little while to get them up. Um, so now I can slide this off uh, as it's done. Um, wow. I'm going to hang the caliper up here out of the way and I'm going to have to let down the handbrake because there's shoes inside here, the handbrake shoes, that are actually holding the disc on at the moment. Just see how we can... Oh, lovely. It's going off. There we go. 
that's it. So we'll look at the back of the disc here, you can see all these like pitting. Um, so obviously the pad wasn't really doing a whole lot on the back uh, of the disc. It's in quite poor shape. Um, certainly not ideal and it's not really safe either. So uh, this one you can see here, let's say that that crack and there's a bit of a high spot. Like this is probably the worst disc I've ever seen. It's really awful. So uh, definitely ho hope the new discs did okay. Um, but they should certainly perform a lot better than these did anyway, for sure. So they'll be chucked in the bin. Actually forgot to mention earlier is if you've never, if you haven't got any of these, invest in them. They are metal trays. You can get them in Little or Aldi for like six or seven quid. Uh, they're just so handy for just keeping stuff together when you're outside working here near the grass. Uh, wheel nuts and stuff tend to roll away and you don't waste time looking for them uh, especially if you can pick up dirt as well so that's not ideal so it's great just throw everything in there I mean they all stick it's great um, what I'm going to do now is want to just throw on the disc and see if it fits okay uh, fingers crossed should be okay I measured up against the old one so I think it should be should be fine so, yeah so let's try and get this up Good. Um, I'm going to clean and copper grease the um, wheel studs as well because I wouldn't say these have been done for a very, very long time. One thing as well I forgot to mention is quite important and it was on the instructions for fitting the new discs is you want to clean the hub face as best you can just to get any dirt or grit off because it could actually lead to warping a disc again. Uh, which is something you really don't want to do, especially when you spend money and you buy brand new ones. So you want to make sure that the behind the hub there is, is all clean. Um, so I'm going to refit this. First, I've got to try and push the, the piston actually back into the housing of the caliper. And um, you want to do that when you fit new pads because as the material wears, it actually the piston is pushed out further and um, closer to the disc. So when I put in these new pads, it probably won't be able to fit over the disc. And uh, when I try to fit it back on like this, so um, I usually use a caliper winding tool, but I haven't got that to hand at the moment. So I've got this long G clamp that's probably going to do the job. I also want to show you before you go pushing back in the piston, you want to come to your brake master cylinder under the engine and actually just loosen the cap off because the, it actually forces the fluid back up through the uh, lines and into the master cylinder. So I'm just going to leave that off for now. But for now, what I'm going to do is pull the caliper back on and then I'm going to remove the carrier, or sorry, the separate the carrier from the actual caliper where the piston is because I want to be able to fit the pads. So one tip as well is, you see, some often see this mistake is on fitting vented or grooved discs is the groove has to fit a certain way. I don't know if you guys can see this down here, but the, the idea is the way it's meant to be is that so this disc turns clockwise and what you want is the bottom part of the groove to touch the caliper first you know as it rotates and then it, it as as it rotates what that does it, it it allows the heat go go from the center of the disc out to the very outside of the groove and that's the way it helps dissipate it so. So now I'm going to, now the caliper, whole caliper is bolted on, I'm going to unbolt the two long bolts here to separate the carrier from the actual caliper heart itself. It's a 14mm socket. Okay, that looks. Well, now I've got uh, this unbolted, the long bolt, in the caliper using the 14mm socket and uh, I'll replace my glove. But um, so this is actually unbolted on this side, so I can actually turn the caliper out like this out of the way, and it just gives me the space then to fit the new red stuff pads. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and sit these in now as well on both sides on both sides of the caliper. Alrighty, and here we go. I've got the 
skipped ahead and I've got the pads in, caliper all bolted back up, got the wheel back on and I've also gone for a spin as well just to test them out and yeah looking absolutely amazing, performance is really good too. Uh, I've also completed the other side as well since the last video and here's a look at that disc, look at that, this is the inside of the disc. So that was absolutely shocking. So this is clearly where we were having the problems with the brake shuttering. And thankfully now I'm glad to say that that's all been cleared up. So yeah, looking good. So that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. Guys, thanks so much if you've made it this far. I really appreciate you sticking out. I'm really hoping to start working on my editing skills and that kind of thing, uh, because I'd love to put out like a lot more of these videos in time. Just basically showcasing what I kind of do uh, every weekend, you know, what I enjoy to do, working on my cars and bikes and that kind of thing. And so I'd love to, to for you guys to maybe send me your comments and advice and that kind of thing. I'd love to hear it. I'd definitely appreciate it as well if you guys would like and subscribe my video and just let me know how I'm getting on. Um, so that's going to be it for a wrap for this one. I'll be joining you again soon enough. Hopefully I have another video for another one of my cars on the next uh, item of maintenance to carry out. So thanks a million guys. Talk to you soon.